Hi, so today I'm going to be showing you how you can get all of your musical machines to communicate with one another. This is great for if you want to perform live, but it's also great for kind of really getting some ideas kind of going creatively. So we're going to be looking at how Apple's Logic Pro 10 can really easily communicate with complete control. This is the S61 Mark II. I haven't made a video about this one yet, so I um, wanted to include it. And then finally, we'll be moving on to looking at how you can link in machine and get machine to actually control changing sounds and some other cool things that I'll show you later in the video. So I'm going to create a new channel strip. I can do this either by double clicking or you can obviously also do it from here as well. But I always find that way quicker anyway. Um, and I'm going to, instead of just going to native instruments and inserting one of the sounds such as Reacto or Massive X, I'm actually going to go to Native Instruments, Complete Control. And this is how we are able to get the most fun out of linking these two machines together. So we still have access to all of the sounds. So you can see here, all in little boxes, that's pretty much a whole complete 11 library. And if you access the sounds this way, then you are able to Again, you can narrow them, so I'm looking for a synth pad, and I want a kind of deep pad. So you can see this little box here will be kind of narrowing the search to these sound criteria. And this is how we actually get to use most of the incredible functionality. So we can audition just by clicking, or even using your cursor buttons. I always find it's a quick way to do that. Now obviously you're hearing just one note, I think it's C, of all of these instruments. But you can see, as I've chosen rounds, I now have rounds on my keyboard as well. Now obviously another way to do this is we can in fact go to the browser and then we've got access in a very similar looking interface to the one you get on the computer, so you should be quite familiar with it, even if you're just using the keyboard for the first time to control. And you can see I've got Reactor selected, so I'm now just able to go through the sounds. Select. Obviously you can use this keyboard on its own just as a MIDI controller. So you can link it up to Logic, you can play any of the Logic sounds, you can also then um, control and link any of the controllers. Um, I actually made another video on that, I think I'll have this in here somewhere. So you know I said I'd done the other video about how to kind of set up any controller for any of these kind of knobs or dials. This way everything is mapped for you, so this is the beauty of complete control, that everything is pre-ordained and mapped and ready for you, like an arranged marriage of music meaning you can get into some deep production really quickly, such as playing around with this cutoff filter on this sound, you know, without having to actually set up any of the controllers. And you can just in, straight away automate this into um, Logic, obviously, if you've got your automation set to touch. So now let's have a look at the new cool functions. So I've got this cool art sound here. Now if you can't play art, it's really easy here to just select the ARP function and it will play you a perfect arpeggio with you just holding the chord. I'll show you some of the functions um, with ARP. So little tip here, press shift gets you kind of deeper into any function. So shift ARP will then take me into some of the um, settings. speed up that arpeggio or I can do a triplet or something like that but I quite like the 16th there. I can also change that into um, a note repeater which is sometimes great if you're doing drum sounds you want to do a build up or a snare roll and it'll do it really kind of rigidly for you. If you want it less rigid you can add some swing as well. Sounds a little bit more human there with the playing. So this is a really really cool function to kind of get creative really quickly. And it will record all those notes directly into Logic for you, so you can edit them in there if you need to. And obviously if you have problems with chords, and there's also some really cool functions as well, so if you can't even play music and you don't know about musical keys, there's some ways to really kind of help you and actually almost teach you as well. I can actually go to this scale function. And can you see now, some of my lights are on, some of my lights are actually off. And that's because the lights that are on are telling me about the scale I'm in. So let's go in deeper to that again as well. 
And you can see I'm in the scale of C, hence why I've just got all the white notes here hidden. So you can choose any scale that you want. And it will kind of teach you how to play them, essentially, if you can't play them. So I think I was playing in um, G minor, so you can change into minor. There's some other more difficult <laughs> keys there <laughs> for you to advance into. And the key mode, you want to have that on mapped. Something strange is happening here where I'm hitting the key and the one without light is actually just playing the correct note. So you cannot go wrong with this. You can only play in the chord or the key of G. So this is really, really great as well. If, you know, if you've got a really good ear and you can kind of tell when things sound good, but you don't necessarily understand um, the basics. So this is a really good teaching aid, I think, as well, with the lights, just kind of adds a whole nother level. And then we've also obviously got your simple, you can play the song, you can stop the song. Another thing that's really cool is I can actually link the two together really easily. Um, and if I'm doing live sets, which I have done with this similar kind of setup, but with the old S49, you can also, so you can see as I'm changing colour, the keyboard is changing colour and I'm getting access to that sound. This is really great for when you want to really quickly, really quickly in a live kind of environment change sound. So, actually use this as a really visual controller as well for if you're doing something kind of live or even these days I'm in the middle of the corona do, do things actually um, streaming from home which I'm going to be doing soon. So now in order to show you um, how it works with machine adding this as a controller for the keyboard we need to go and go to the channel strip, insert machine. You can see the interface looks really similar to the complete control one that we were just looking at. And I've got a few sounds here that I'm triggering. So now if we go to the top right here, we can see we've got a little button that looks like machine. And we can trigger that and that also helps with any latency issues. So if you give that a little push, if you're getting any delay when you're hitting machine at any point, um, that kind of solves a lot of those latency issues. To the right here, we've got another button, which if I press, then communicates directly with the Complete Control S61. And these kind of enable you to choose one as a kind of slave and one as a master, essentially, as well. So by hitting this one, I can now trigger some sounds just using the machine, and the keyboard changes the sound as well and you can see the colors changing here on the keyboard um, showing us how these are communicating with one another. Now this is really useful for when you're using any of these Native Instruments products in a live kind of set because it means you can change sounds without having to go to your door although the functionality is coming from Logic Pro or Ableton um, and you can trigger the sound so I just wanted to show you how, how this works and basically yeah there you go, how they all communicate with one another. Hope you've enjoyed this. Bye.